Well, would you look at that. You made it. A full year has passed us by once again, and to some of us, that might have felt rather quick. <coughs> Not to me. Skip it up and that up. This year has been absolutely tremendous to our odd and deeply unsettling obsession with Tire Splitters. As someone who's been all eared up for the last 10 or so years, just waiting for any amount of drip fed information when it comes to the future of this franchise. Last year, in particular, has felt like a right kick into first gear. So much has happened, well, in context to all the years previous, obviously. Let's rewind. Ah. <coughs> and recap all of this tremendous news. Trust me, there's actually quite a bit, which I know sounds surprising. Starting the year off, we were dropped our first Tie Splitters bombshell. Someone from our own community speed ran our favourite game in front of hundreds of thousands of people at one of the largest online events of the year. How amazing is that? AGDQ is a speedrun event to raise money for charity. It's watched by thousands, tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of people all at once. The streams showcase a series of games from a variety of speedrunners for multiple days. And last year, our very own Emo Sewer MC was one of those runners. I have no idea how to pronounce that name. Keep that our little secret in this little YouTube bubble, okay? Let's just leave that here and not go around uh, embarrassing me. Maybe I got it right, or maybe I just butchered it so horribly bad, it's gonna make me look a bit like an asshole. It was such a great highlight of the whole event, and I highly recommend checking it out. If you want, the link is down below, by the way. And if you haven't watched it, what the hell are you doing? Why are you watching this <laughs> Get up! when you could be watching that? Now, not to sound too egotistical for a second, but at this point, I kind of hit 1,000 subscribers. I'm proud of that. So this year I hit a thousand subs, which if you think about it, is just ridiculous. Imagine getting a thousand people crammed into your living room, it would be bloody difficult. You know, as somebody who started this channel off with the sole intention of just having a platform to archive their crappy PS2 maps, it definitely seemed like an irrational hope that anyone would end up clicking a button to see more of that. Well, not exactly that, but you get my point. Wait, what's the point I'm trying to make again? I don't know, but what I do know is that I am just utterly blown away, and my gratitude cannot be expressed enough. Thank you. So, so much. It's still mind-blowing. God, do you remember home, friends? Because unfortunately, I still do. Last year, when we all found out Homefront did in fact host the entire game of TS2 secretly within its files, and it was accessible through cheat codes. It honestly sounds like a mad conspiracy theory when someone explains this series of events that led up to that discovery. Like it's something so completely bonkers, you would be so convinced it wasn't reality. Yet, it was. Allow me to indulge you for a minute with something so utterly surreal you swear I was just making it up on the spot. A mysterious singular home front developer, who we weren't allowed to know the name nor identity of, was supplying, exclusively, to one or two individuals about a certain wink wink nudge nudge within home front the revolution, phrasing in such a way with, uh, you know buddy, that that TS2 arcade cabinet, it isn't all what it seems to be. Perhaps the full game is accessible, you know, somehow. From there on then, this quote-unquote mystery man was dropping cryptic clues which flowed down into the mole-infested burrows below. This, inevitably, gave sentience to the moles, who went on to dig through the game for answers. When you question about who exactly this quote-unquote mystery guy is, and is he at least somewhat credible? Or perhaps... Oh my god, it's got, just got a Discord notification. That kind of scared me, actually. 
Or perhaps, does he even exist at all? Can't say, not allowed. Anyway, here's more binary codes he's been teasing us with. But by bloody Nora, if it wasn't all true. Every last bit of it. There really was an anonymous developer, there really was a group of egg hunters, there really was one or two individuals who knew the identity, there really was a potential legal ramification, and there really was the entire game hidden away, ready to be found. Who would have guessed it was completely real? Now, who could forget the biggest drop of the year? The revival of free radical design and the official confirmation that Time Splitters is finally getting a continu- And the official confirmation that Time Splitters is finally getting a continuation. I don't think you or I would have guessed something like that was going to happen. Or at least not for another, what, 25 or 75 years? But yet, it did. Randomly. Which was so weird. A 12 year old me making those OMG TS4 confirmed videos on YouTube would have just self combusted into actual flames. <laughs> just when you thought the year was nigh and all that could have been said about the franchise was over. We got our HD remasters. You asked for more games to join our backward compatibility program, from the biggest blockbusters to cult classics, and we listened. Today we are celebrating our anniversary by adding more than 70 original Xbox and Xbox 360 games to our backward compatibility catalog. Okay, sure, it wasn't officially called the, you know, HD remasters, but look! TS2 and Future Perfect was made backwards compatible on Xbox, in full HD, for the first time ever, <coughs> minus emulation, <coughs> it's now ready to be played on an SSD in 60 frames per second. Basically, what I'm saying is, you can play the game right now in HD, with basically no loading screens and as smooth as hell frame rates. It's more than I could ever ask for. It's what I always wanted, essentially. Now, if only Times Plus One was also on Xbox 2, and it would have been absolutely perfection. But even still, what the hell were the odds? And yes, before you ask, you can even play the online. It requires a bit of a setup to get working right, but it's super easy enough. And if I can get it working, then literally anybody can. So, that was 2021. Compare the amount of excitement from this franchise in the last year to literally any year that came after Free Radical Design closing down. I think it really shines just how much Time Plus News came out in perspective. I do honestly believe more and more acknowledgements, hype and news from this franchise is yet to come. And as we all know, the future of Time Splitters has finally got a definitive answer, that its continuation is inevitable. The best is yet to come, so let's just see if this year can top last year. Thanks for watching.